Hey there, and welcome to the Apartment Building Investing Podcast. I am your host, Micah Blanc. Today's episode, we're going to talk about how to build credibility. And specifically, how do you create a good website? It's like the first face of your company to brokers, investors. They, As soon as you call them, they'll invariably Google you. And if they find some, if they don't find a site, that's a problem. If they find a site that sucks, that's even worse of a problem. The problem with that is, while it's a great idea, most people struggle with a website. Uh, because if you're a do-it-yourselfer, it takes a lot of time to put everything together. And then step two is you could contract it out. So you can have a writer, you can have a designer and a developer put all the plugins together, put it in place. It can cost you several thousand dollars. And that's what most people do or somewhere in the middle. Uh, and so it's a, it's, a real, it's a real challenge. And most investors really aren't techies like me. And I kind of love it, though. you got to ask yourself, is that really the best use of your time? And the answer, in my mind, is, is, is no. The best use of your time is to finding deals and, and raising money, not putting up a bunch of, installing a bunch of plugins. So I wanted, uh, I'm going to have on a show today, Todd Heitner from Apartment Investor Pro. He's been a web developer for, gosh, a long time. And we kind of outline the uh, elements of a good website and some considerations on how to, how to do those things. And then we kind of have to have, have a hack at the end that allows you to accelerate that uh, a little bit. So let's get right into the, uh, the interview here with Todd Heitner. Hey, Todd, and welcome to the show today. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you here. Tell us a little bit about you and your business. All right. Um, well, as far as my, my, myself, um, I've designed my life to try to live simply uh, so I can have the freedom to travel and set my own schedule. Um, I always wanted, I always liked the idea of being able to work from anywhere. You know, I, I'm entrepreneurial by nature. I always hated the idea of being uh, tied down to a job. Um, so I, I've enjoyed, you know, experiencing other cultures, spending quality time with my uh, friends and family. And uh, because of the way I've designed my life, my wife and I actually were able to live in the Caribbean for six years. And uh, all this past summer, we went to, to Europe for a month. I remember that. You were in Germany, I, kind of went, went around the time when I was. We were in different places, but yeah, yeah, that was an, that was an awesome trip. We really enjoyed that. Um, so um, yeah, so even though you know, don't on one hand don't like being uh, tied down too much. At the same time, there's you know some constants in my life, like my business with real estate investors, and um, also been married to an awesome wife for 17 years. So um, yeah, so that's basically my, my personal life. Um, as far as business, uh, mainly what I do is offer websites to real estate investors, uh, both multifamily and single family investors. Um, I always like the idea of helping other people get their business set up and online and automated as much as possible, you know, so they can have the same kind of freedom that, that I have if that's something they want, you know, where they can, um, you know, have the freedom to, to do things they really want to do. Um, so I, I started, uh, started setting up, focusing on websites for real estate investors back in 2004, uh, so about 15 years ago. And uh, I wanted to set up a website service where most of the technical details are already done for my clients and all they have to do is sign up and get a website that's specifically, you know, built for their type of business with all the content and everything. Uh, so the, the business I have, the, the single family investor service is called Done Deal Website and then the multifamily is Apartment Investor Pro. Uh, my, my wife works with me. Uh, we have a small team that works with us handling, you know, things like support, de uh, web development, marketing. But we're a small business and, you know, like to make sure our, our customers get personal support when they need it too. So that's, that's basically it. So the website is, is a very important part of building credibility. So I, I do want to get into website because I want people to understand kind of what elements they need to put in a website and how to go about kind of setting it up. I have found that it's a stumbling block for, for a lot of people, uh, maybe some, some hacks to, to kind of accelerate that. Um, but let's talk about the credibility thing because the website, credibility is so important. It's one of those things that... Um, what we teach, we can overcome certain lack of experience, you know, educate yourself, take a, take a course, take ours, someone else's, educate yourself, use the right language. But then there's the other element around your team. We talk about, hey, you got to build your team. So when you talk about yourself, you're not talking about yourself, uh, you're talking about in terms of your team. And there's that third thing we don't talk too much about, but that's all the things around us. So appearing professional, being on time, dressing right, having business cards, and of course, having a website, right? So when someone calls a, a broker, the first thing they'll do is bloop, they'll try to Google you, right? Uh, and they'll try to find your website. If you don't have a website, that's bad. If you have a really bad website, it's probably even worse. And so I, I want to talk about credibility uh, just in general. I mean, what are, what are some, uh, <clears throat> what is, why do you think that credibility is so important, especially as a real estate investor? Well, you know, people tend to be skeptical anyway. And like you said, we expect businesses to have a website. So, like, you know, if there's not a website, then 
you, you know, you immediately think, is this really even a real business? Or like you said, if it's a poorly designed site, it's like, is this a scam or something? Um, but yeah, especially with, with uh, apartment investors where you're, you know, dealing with people that are business savvy, you need to give them a reason to trust you or to give, give them your time. Um, and, you know, cause they, they need to know that you're not going to waste their time. You're actually going to be able to close. Um, and if, when you're just starting out and you don't have the experience and track record to rely on, then I, I think a website's even, even more important. Um, it can, you know, if it looks professional enough, they can really give you instant credibility uh, because it, um, you know, the typical person that is just starting out that really doesn't have any idea what they're doing, they're not going to have a professional looking website typically. Um, you know, and so when, when you have one that, that kind of gives a, a really strong signal that, yeah, you do know what you're, what you're talking about, or you're, you're serious about this, you know, enough to invest in a website. Yeah. I think the, the website is really, I mean, it's probably probably the most important element because that's totally what precedes the business card or the way you're dressed or being on time because a lot of times you're doing stuff over the phone remotely. So they're going to want to uh, check you out. And if you, if I guess it's really, really important to have a website. Most investors that I've come across aren't technical in any way. Uh, and so they either try to do it themselves um, and, and they struggle or they try to outsource it, but it costs a lot of money. And, and then some just put up a, a very, very simple website. It doesn't really do what it needs to do. So in, what is your advice about if someone's thinking a website, what are some of the things that people should, uh, should address or think about? Yeah. Um, so you mean like some of the elements of a website? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So the, you know, the first thing to think about is, is your domain name really. Um, that's a, a big part of it because you know, that's like your name.com, whatever. And, uh, that's what people are going to type in to get to your website. So, uh, you know, I, I usually recommend sticking with a, a company that you've, you've heard of before when you're getting your domain name, because there are, are some companies out there that aren't going to let you make the, the changes that you need to change. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I would recommend people to use their business name in their domain name. So I know like you have Nighthawk equity, so you have nighthawk equity.com. Um, you know, that, you kind of want that to match, I think, whenever possible, especially with apartment investing. I think that's important. Um, I can so imagine. I, yeah. I can imagine, Todd, that the the, uh, the the availability or or the lack of a domain name probably affects your the name that you use for your company, right? So if you really love yeah. the name of a company and there's no domain available, maybe you should have think of another name. Right. Yeah. So I do recommend that people before you you know really get your heart set on a certain business name, check to see if the domain name's available first. And, and make sure it's the .com because you don't want the .net, .biz, all those kind of things because people are kind of, we're, we're programmed to think .com. And so even if you say .net or whatever, for one thing that doesn't look as professional, but people might still type in the, the, the .com anyway and end up on somebody else's website. So yeah, it's really part of your brand, you know. So it's, um, you know, something to take seriously, you know, to, to really put some thought into it before you, before you do it. And yeah. um, so... So picking yeah, the case. main name is, is number one. Uh, what's, what's next? Well, for, so another part of, uh, an important part of a website is web hosting. Uh, you know, every website has to be hosted somewhere. Sometimes people kind of miss that, that, you know, don't realize that, that it, it, you have to have, it's kind of like when you use cloud-based services like iCloud or Dropbox, whatever, your, your files are stored on a server somewhere. And when you need them, you can access them through the internet. It's kind of the same, same thing with a website. Um, you know, you're basically renting space on a computer somewhere that has a really high speed connection to the internet. Um, and so, you know, these web hosting companies have rooms full of servers and everything. They maintain all that technical stuff for you. Um, and so, you know, I found that you basically get what you pay for with hosting. You know, you can get these low cost hosting companies and, you know, you're probably gonna have issues where your site goes down often or it's slow. And sooner or later with any website, there's going to be some kind of technical issues and, you know, it's a matter of, can you get help when you need it? You know, there, are you going to be able to get support? Uh, so some of the lower cost companies, they, they tend to cram too many people on, on one machine, which, you know, is going to, you know, cause problems down the road. So, uh, so with hosting, yeah, generally it's worth it to pay a, a little bit more and have high quality hosting and, you know, better support with that. Are there, are there uh, any particular hosting providers that you would recommend? Well, for, um, one that I like for, for WordPress based uh, sites, I use uh, WP engine they're mm -hmm. called because they are um, specifically built for WordPress and they've, they've got it set up where it works. Um, you know, it, it's really high speed. They, they, uh, 
use caching and other things to, to keep your site running really fast. So I like that. It's a, you know, it's not definitely not the cheapest, but it's, it's um, good quality though. All right. So pick a quality hosting provider. That's, that's good. Uh, what, what else do we need to pay attention to? Um, so the, you know, the next thing is design, you know, and, and traditionally there's been a couple main options with that. You know, you can either hire a designer to do it for you from scratch, or you can, um, uh, you know, you can try to try to do it yourself somehow. Um, but, um, you know, when it comes to hiring someone, you're either going to, it's another thing where you, a lot of times get what you pay for, you know, you can either hire someone really cheap that might be um, in a third world country where English isn't their first language, where you're typically, typically going to have some communication issues, or you pay a lot more and, you know, uh, to get something, you know, that you, that you really like. Um, and, and I would recommend not going as cheap as possible when it comes to the design because, you know, it, it's, it's your first impression that you make as we talked about, the, the credibility. So if you have a, a cheap looking site, then that's not really the impression you want to want to give people that's not the kind of so the design just so we were clear includes things like what so what is the scope if i'm looking for a website designer what is that person supposed to deliver to me well it, so the, basically the overall look and feel of your site you know the uh, it could be the, the colors the uh, any graphics that you need to have on there so kind of designing what you know your it's, it's sort of like your branding i guess too you could have them you could have them you know even do a logo uh, but that could be could be separate too but um, but yeah, the, all the, just the, the look and feel of your, of your site. Basically. How much do some of these things uh, typically cost? Um, you know, it can be anywhere from hundreds to, to thousands of dollars, really, you know, depending on, on, uh, on where you go, who you get, what, what you need, but it can, it can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. It, it can. Uh, we, we've been through it as well. And, and I've done stuff on Fiverr, Fiverr.com. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah. You do get what you pay for. Um, yeah. The really good designers. We just read a, you know, we did a redesign of the michaelblank.com. I don't know about six, seven months ago, and it was, it was not cheap, but it was so professionally done that I was really, really pleased with a with a result. But you had a, you know, it, it did. It definitely was not a Fiverr designer. So you definitely get paid what you pay for, uh, in that as well. So there's definitely yeah. a design. Uh, what what else do you have to pay attention to? Well, so, you know, when it comes to the design, so that that's one option is you know you hire somebody to do it, or the other option is you you know, you can touch on there's these do it yourself, like website builders. Um, but you know, that's something to, to really think about. Cause if you don't have a background in design work, you're either going to end up with something that doesn't look good enough to represent your, your business, or you're going to spend weeks or months trying to get it right. And that's just really not a good use of your time. Um, well, that's a good point. I, I mean, there are plugins and uh, I've used Divi now and I know my first iteration of the website, I did myself. Now I have a little bit of a technical bent, uh, to start with, most people don't, but things like Divi, right? Divi is a, is a, a, a plugin that's a theme-based plugin. And WordPress makes it really easy to select different themes and it modifies your site. Um, and it is really cool. It's actually really easy to put together things. The problem is it's a, it can be, it's likely going to be a major time suck. Um, first of all, you got to figure out how to use it, which is one thing, but then you end up tinkering forever with stuff, with colors and font sizes and buttons of that nature. Um, I enjoy it, uh, but but I, I and maybe you do as well. <laughs> but the, the vast majority of people, I mean, you know, installing a plugin, configuring it, and Divi is very powerful, which makes it also very, uh, you know, very daunting. But you can do a lot yeah. of cool things with with Divi as well. So it's it's if, if you're a do-it-yourself tinker, you know, themes like Divi are are a great way to way to go. And that probably leads us into kind of the development work because there are some. So you have the hosting, and you put in the WordPress. Typically, you have a, a theme-based plugin. But then there's like customizations and development uh, that people probably want eventually. What what are some of those considerations? Yeah, so you know if so with the development, um, you know basically that's kind of all the the software code, everything that's behind the scenes making the site work, making it do what it, you want it to do. Uh, so you know there are those completely do it yourself kind of things, or or there's you know some something like WordPress, like you mentioned, where um, you know it, it's some of the work is already done for you, but you know, but you still have a lot of flexibility. Like you mentioned Divi, uh, which I use a lot and that it's kind of, it's a great because it gives you all that uh, flexibility, but it's also kind of like a blank slate. So it's like, if you don't know, you know how, you know, it takes a lot of, a lot of effort still to get it to a point where you, you know, are going to uh, have, have it something presentable. Uh, well, that, so, that's right. And there's, yeah. there's a lot of the nice thing about WordPress uh, and you probably agree is it's an ability to customize things and you get plugins for everything. But there's like a handful of plugins that I know everybody would, would need. Uh, you know, there's SEO plugins. 
There's going to be a form, some way to put a form to capture information, uh, uh, something to put a blog post, probably email integration of some sort. Um, so you can get plugins for all kinds of stuff. Uh, but again, it's one yeah. of those things like, what is the value of your time? And I, I do think that, and again, I, I'm a little partial to this stuff because I'm a, I'm a you know, computer science guy in the back. So I kind of I kind of geek out in this stuff things. But yeah. even, you know, is it really the best use of your time to geek out on these things, even if you could? And that's like the biggest, the biggest question. Uh, but you know, again, it's one of those things where hiring a, a, a good developer, uh, and, and you know, is it American U S based? Is it not? But you know, 20, 30 bucks, you know, for, for setting up plugins, configuring plugins, getting the SEO, right. That kind of stuff. <clears throat> and that probably costs several hundred dollars as well to hire someone to do it. Um, yeah. I, I think it is, you're right. It's probably not the, I think the best use of your time from an investor perspective is to look for deals and raise money. Uh, yeah. Not so much putting up your website, but right. again, for you do-it-yourselfers out there, there there's a plug-in for everything under the sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, which is great. It's But, you know, the, the problem is every one of those has a little bit of a learning curve, too. You know, so, like, the plug-in has well, a learning do. curve. That the, the, the Each plug-in works a little bit differently, so you've got to figure out how to use it. So just just something simple like building a contact form, even if a, a plug-in makes it easy to do, it's still, there's still a lot of trial and error to do, a lot of, testing you need to do to make sure it's actually working right so so we got you got the plugins you got a lot of plugins you got to put in there um uh what else what else uh, there's content right let's, let's talk about let's yeah. talk about content what's what's important on content yeah you know that's something that sometimes people don't put a lot of thought into before they start on the site and then they they realize oh wow i've got to i've got to write i've got to figure out exactly what to say on every page i've got to figure out what pages i need and I, some people get completely hung up on that and actually never launch their website because they never get the content written. So, you know, without, you can either do it yourself or you can hire somebody to do it. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not used to writing, you don't like writing, it's, it's, it's kind of a pain really <laughs> to try to get the, the wording right to decide, you know, the, you have to think about the impression you're going to give. Um, really every word can make a difference. One, one word could kind of stop people in their tracks and make them think, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with this. So you really, you know, it does take a lot of effort um, where you can hire someone to do it, which is not really not cheap either. Uh, so you can, um, you know, you still, in, even if you hire someone, you kind of need to tell them what you want, you know, what, what kind of feel you want, what kind of content, what pages you need. So it does, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of effort still um, to. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to, it's, it's a blank, the blank paper problem, right? As any author knows, you sit yeah. there. I mean, I, I went through it uh, writing my book even when I, oh my gosh, or a blog post. You're like, oh my gosh. Uh, and how do, how do I get, where do I even start? And the advice really is you just start, you know, spewing forth on the paper, just start writing. But you got, you got, you need content for, you know, about you, who, who's your company? What are you about? You know, what kind of investments are in the case of real estate? What kind of investments do you for? What does the process work? So some education a little, little bit. So you got to be able to write some, some content. And it doesn't have to be very, very long, but you need something on there that sounds professional and, and, you're, and you're right. It's, it's, uh, it's difficult sometimes to come up with that, with that uh, initial content. Uh, but again, a do-it-yourself can probably, you know, do it in a, in a, in a, in a few hours and look at a few websites and kind of get some ideas without plagiarizing it. But yeah, you certainly knew that. And then we'd even talk about, Todd, the other content, which is, well, so you have the website content, but then there's also the ongoing content. So if you're right. doing a blog, for example, uh, and that definitely is, um, is an, an ongoing, an ongoing thing. Um, and so the website has to, and most WordPress sites have this, uh, you have the ability to update and uh, update uh, blogs, but again, um, that's something you have to think about. Uh, yeah. what else? So we have obviously the content, you got to come up with a content you can do yourself. You can hire a writer for that. Um, what else is important? I mean, maintenance is another thing that sometimes gets overlooked because once the site is up, you know, like if you're using WordPress, for example, um, once it's up, you have to keep, keep, you know, WordPress, plugins, themes, everything up to date, because if you don't, uh, you know, people can end up hacking into your site and, um, you know, and some of those people think, well, I, I'm not that big of a company. Nobody's going to care about hacking into my site, but you know, they, they do, they try to hack into every site. Just there's these automated systems that go out there and try to find, um, you know, they say, okay, this is a WordPress site. Here are some ways I might be able to get in. And, and they, you know, their goal is just to upload stuff to your site that they can use for sending out spam or, you know, whatever. But uh, they can really mess things up for you if you um, don't keep everything up to date. So that's really important, you know, keep those things up to date all the time. Um, 
Yeah, keep them uh, up to date. And there's also plugins that uh, that help prevent unauthorized access. They actually start shutting the site down, that kind of stuff. I get yeah. there's a plugin for everything, but you gotta you there gotta, find them. You gotta <laughs> right. find them. There's more, normally more than one. Uh, and again, I, I love this kind of stuff. But you can, you can spend hours doing this stuff. But it's all yeah. out there. You can you can piece it together. Um, what else? Is there anything else for a website? Uh, those are the main things. I mean, one you know one thing that I, I think is great though is if you can find a way to automate things. So you know when it and, and you can do this with like with WordPress and some of the plugins out there, like your contact forms. You can have those. Uh, connect to third-party services, you know, like like a CRM, you know, to to store all your your contacts in, or like an email marketing system, like where you send automatic emails out, stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's that's uh, I'm all about automating things. You know, anything that anything that I'm doing that the computer can do or the internet, some some kind of system, I'd much rather you know do that, get it off my plate. But also, besides just the time factor, it it, it keeps things happening consistently too you know so if, like if you have emails going out to new you know potential investors for example um, you know uh, things are going to slip through the cracks if you're depending on manually sending out emails or or calling them but if you have a, a series of emails programmed to go out to each person then each person is going to have the same consistent experience and they, you know they're not going to fall through the cracks so um, that's one thing that you know to think about it as soon as possible with your website is is getting things automated uh, as much as you can well, there's, there's actually, you brought up a good point. I mean, the first, the first goal of a website is credibility, and we talked about that. But then once that website is up, you got to think about, uh, I want to put this, I want to think about, I want you guys to think about building a brand. You're really building a brand. Uh, so you have a logo, you have a web presence, but you're also really, for, especially for syndicators, they are building their list of potential investors because we're all trying to raise money. And the best way to do that, and you do it on your website, I do it on mine, is you have, you, know, you want to build your list of emails. So that you can engage investors, you engage them, you educate them, they uh, grow, they become, uh, they, they, you know, they start trusting you and eventually they'll start investing with you as well. But lead capture is very important. And you mentioned the CRM, it's really uh, customer relationship management, it's really an email system. So a lot of people use the free MailChimp. I think it's like free for 2000 users, but there's others mm -hmm. like Constant Contact, uh, Aweber. We use Active Campaign, which I, which I really love. But the idea is that you have some kind of form where people can sign up. And, and, and there's different form plugins that capture the information and then stick it into whatever email system that you're using. And then you're talking about a, an automated sequence of emails. So when someone gets added to a list, it could be the new investor list, they get a series of welcome emails and that kind of stuff, uh, whatever the case. And so having those done and now keeps that investor engaged, right? And so automating right. that is what you're, what you're talking about. So it's yeah. very important to put those, uh, those forms on the, on the website. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, and if you, you do keep in contact with them like that by whether it be by, by email or maybe putting blog posts on your site, you're staying in, in front of their mind. So when they are ready to take action or they're ready to, whether it be investing or whatever, like they're, you're going to be the one that they think of first. So trying to keep, keep that relationship going, building that relationship through things like that can really uh, be really powerful. Yeah. So Website, really important for those different reasons. It's really important in the beginning to build credibility. And then secondly, it's very important to uh, build your list, engage them, and gain trust so you can raise more money. Now, I know I've had several interactions with people who, who, who agreed with all this stuff, um, but they felt it was so important that uh, it prevented them from actually calling brokers and investors because they want to get their website up. Well, you know, it can be, it can be quite the effort to get this, this website up. And so the weeks dragged on and on and on. And Oh, I'm working on my website. Oh, I'm doing the business business cards. Now, you could argue that to one extent that they were trying to defer the actually picking up the phone, and there's something to that. I just find that most uh, investors really are not technically inclined, and so this kind of holds them back. Um, and, and that's kind of a kind of shame. It, it comes relatively easy to me, but again, I have to put hours in. But even if someone like me, uh, it's, and are those hours better spent calling brokers and you know, reaching out to investors? And, and at this point, I would definitely argue the answer, the answer is yes. Um, but, uh, you have a solution to this problem and that's one of the reasons I brought you on the show. Um, I think, um, we kind of outlined the steps and things that are out there, um, to kind of piece this together, but you have a really, really clever solution, uh, with apartment investor pro. I want to talk about that real, real quick because it helps people overcome that challenge. And, and I want people to start, um, doing deals as quickly as possible. I don't want this to be a stumbling block. And um, I've hired contractors before to put up websites. And even if I outsource this, it's still pain in the butt. And right. it costs me money, okay? 
and, and, and your solution is really clever because it's already kind of turnkey as well. And you've been doing this for, for a while. You did it th- or first through single family house investing and you said, hey, you know, there's actually need in a multifamily as well. So can you talk a little bit about Apartment Investor Pro and what you guys do there to kind of accelerate that whole thing? Yeah, you know, so I, I sent out to solve that, those obstacles that come with getting a website. You know, the, the whole thing of having to get the design made, the, the development setting up all the hosting all that kind of stuff I wanted it to, to set up something where apartment investors can just sign up and have a website the same day um, you know without having to agonize over the design the technical details or content uh, for for weeks or months um, so um, you know so basically I, what, I, what I did was spent I spent the weeks and months well yeah definitely months um, designing a website for apartment investors to use as sort of a you know where you know I put a a lot of effort trying to get it to look just right, you know, because like I said, you know, the first impression makes such a difference. So I wanted to make it look as professional as possible um, so that someone who is maybe even just getting started can sign up and they can look really professional, you know, have a website that has kind of that kind of like a corporate look and feel attractive, modern, you know, make people say, wow, when they see it. Um, we talked a little bit about, about WordPress, uh, which I really like WordPress. And so I use that to, to build these sites and that, um, so what, what we did is we include the hosting and everything. Um, you know, we talked earlier about some of the like plugins and themes of, you know, there's some of these things as, as you know, get expensive, but I've, you know, like got license that licenses for all this stuff that are installed on, on people's sites. Some of that stuff costs hundreds of dollars a year, but it's all included. So you don't have to go out and find all these different things, piece them together, spend all the time trying to come up with a, a design. Uh, it basically gives you a, a website that's ready to go you know, as, as soon as you, as you soon, um, uh, uh, sign up, of course, people can, can customize. And I, I recommend that, you know, get your own logo made, put that on there. Um, if you want to tweak the content a little bit, make it, make it your own, then by all means do that, but you don't have to, to be able to get started with your website. You know, it's, um, it, it's basically ready to go for what most people are going to need from the get go. So, um, and, and including the content, that's the, that's the thing that people often get hung up on you know, I put all the pages and content in, in there that will work for most people uh, as it is. And of course, if, if somebody wants to customize it, they can. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and that's, try to make that as easy as possible too with a, like a visual editor where you can just click where you want to change the text and change the wording. And um, so really all you need is a, a domain name, which we, we talked about earlier, the importance of that. Um, I don't include that because I think it's important for the business owner to actually own the domain name, you know, because that's, that's part of your brand and something that you want to, uh, own, but even with that, if, uh, if, if, you know, when it comes time to connect that to your website, we'll do that, you know, do that at no cost to, uh, you know, get that connected. And, um, and if a person doesn't have the domain name yet, they're still deciding on the, the company name or, or whatever, they can add that on whenever they're ready to. So it's, it doesn't have to hold you up in getting started setting up the website. Yeah, I really like it because like you said, you can literally have a, a, an apart, a, a website in a day. And in fact, I like it so much that we include it in our mentoring program. So if someone signs up for a mentoring program, we buy it for our, on behalf of our students and within a day they have a website. Now what's important for me being the developer and a control freak, I need to be able to get in there and customize stuff. And I like the fact that you didn't lock things down on the back end. You can actually still install plugins. You can disable them. You can do all kinds of, you know, back end hacking. Uh, if someone wants to, uh, and that's and that's cr- that's great. You also have forms uh, to capture investor information, so that's really important. We can talk about that, but capturing investor information, right? Uh, so that's already on there as well. So essentially, you just all you need is a domain name and, and a logo, and if you don't have one, you basically provide a default one, and so yeah. that's that's done with, right? No one can say, right. oh, let me. It's going to take me weeks to do a website. Boom, first day done. <laughs> I really I really love that. Um, yeah. So. Um, how can people find out more about, uh, about this, this package? I, I think, I think you have a special offer for our, our listeners. So I, to, to talk really quick about that. I do. Yeah. Um, so normally I would say go to apartmentinvestorpro.com, but I, I don't recommend that for our listeners because I, um, I've set up a special discount for, for your listeners, Michael. So that, um, the only way to get the special pricing is if they go to the michaelblanc.com forward slash pro site. And uh, yeah, they're getting a, a huge discount. I don't think I even want to say how much it is. I want them to be surprised. <laughs> That's a pretty, but, nice, uh, pretty nice discount. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it will be a little bit surprising. But yeah, that um, and that, that page that we, we set up will actually show what the, the sites look like. You can click to see a demo. You can see what all is included. Um, but the only way to get that discount is to go through that 
that page um, at the michaelblanc.com forward slash pro site. That's P R O S I T E. So yeah, really impressed with what you put together, Todd. I mean, it, it, and I've been looking for a solution like that. I was thinking of even putting together like a, you know, a template and some videos around it, you know, it's such a big problem. And so yeah. uh, we've been working on this for, for a little bit and I really like what you, what you've done. It's really easy. It's really affordable. And hopefully a lot of people will take advantage of it. So you guys go to the michaelblank.com forward slash pro site, P R O S I T E to get the, the discount from part investor pro. And uh, there's no reason you shouldn't have a website in a day. So get that up. So really thank you so much for coming on the show. And, and, and I have been just waiting uh, to have you on and, and talking about this stuff because everyone's like, how do I get up a website? It's taking too long. Blah, blah, blah. So real nice job with that, Todd. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed it. All right, guys. So putting up a website should no longer be a problem for you uh, because Todd's stuff, and I've looked at it myself, I'm really pleased with, uh, with the way it looks on the outside and the way I've even looked on the inside because I'm kind of a, a, a techie in that way. It's done very well. So it's, it's easy to use on the one hand, but powerful and customizable on the other. And he's made it really affordable. Um, now, the price he's giving you guys for, for, for listening to this is, pr is pretty, really good. So make sure to get that. Go to, to themichaelblanc.com forward slash pro site, P-R-O-S-I-T-E. I'm also going to, and, and just to give you this, I do have an affiliate relationship with Todd, which means I get a portion of, of the money that you're going to spend anyway. I will get a portion of that. Uh, but I'm really excited about Todd. I met him and his wife. Uh, they stopped by our uh, last event at Dealmaker Live. Uh, really, a really great couple. I've uh, been doing this for a long time and just now started doing it for the multifamily stuff. Really, really happy with it. Um, and we're going to be using it a lot. In fact, we use it for our mentoring program. So on that, on that note, if, if you think that mentoring would be right for you, uh, go to the michaelblank.com forward slash coaching and sign up for a free strategy session. And uh, this is a, an, an, a great example. We do a bunch of things for you when you come onto the mentoring program because we want to hit, want to make sure you hit the ground running. For example, we research and give you all of our broker contacts, property managers, and the, your target geography. And the one thing we do is we actually include this website for you. So as soon as you sign up within a day, you have your own website. <clears throat> and this is so, so cool. And uh, so we include it for mentoring pro, uh, for students. But if you're just a money raiser or a syndicator, sign up for, for his website and then you have your, we your website up and running in minutes. All right, guys, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I will catch you on the next episode. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, the next step, download this ebook right here, okay? When you've downloaded that, uh, make sure you also subscribe to my YouTube channel because then you can get all of the videos that I release as soon as I release. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel right now. Click on that right now. And then also make sure that this is the next best video to watch is this one right here. So hope you enjoy that. I'll catch you next time.